Is when was it that you decided to start going and what was it that you started with and how did all that work out? It was around uh, 04, 05. I started, uh, started making uh, beats by uh, chopping a uh, couple samples from old music that I liked and stuff, I guess. Stuff that you can recognize and can't recognize, depending. I, I used a bit of both. And uh, with some nice drum samples that I you know came upon and they were really like i didn't know nothing about mixing at the time but like you know thankfully they were you know kind of like pre-mixed good sounds you know so they kind of fit good together and i would just line them up on cool edit at the time before adobe bought that company uh and turned it to adobe audition it was called the app called cool, cool edit where you can just it's a timeline uh editor where you just you know line up your audio uh, clips and you can kind of affect the sound or clean it up to a certain degree you know and uh within you know which shook me to my ground within a very short period of time i found myself like within months like i think maybe maybe four to five months i found myself in new york uh in a beat battle Wait, in, a, in a, yeah because within within that period of, of time where like I, I my learning curve i had started sending out stuff you know, to certain people, and, and at the time it was the MySpace days and things like that. Uh, it kind of landed at the time on some people called Icelanders, and like they evolved into a whole other monster today. But at the, at the time, they were very like you know, such a small movement, and like at its at its roots, very pure. <coughs> and uh, I made the pre-selection to get onto a beat, a beat battle in New York at a bar. And uh, one of the judges was Lenny S, which is from the Jay Z camp. Okay. Very close, very close to him. And uh, a lot of people came up, you know, before me. Some people had, you know, very good beats, average beats. And what I taught at the time, my perspective was. And then there was some people that had, you know, some very severe criticisms and some very good and like. That's when that that's when I'm like, it kind of added a lot of hair on my chest. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm like oh like I'm in fucking New York, and like like it's different. It's not home. You know what I mean? And like it really, it, but it felt good. It gave me a rush, and I'm like like it can't be that bad. You know what I mean? You know like and, and I was but I was just like inside hoping that I wasn't gonna get harsh criticism. And uh, after I went on, you know, like I saw the not the, not only the crowd was bumping, but like I saw the judges were bumping. That was the first time that like I ever saw somebody outside of anybody who gives a fuck about me. You know what I mean? Actually, right. Bob, you know shit. what you mean? That's that's a, that that was the first out, outside validation, and and and, and, I'm, and I'm young at the time. Yeah, that's like, fucking huge. In my early twenties. So know? hold on, let's stop for a quick second here. Because I do want to talk more about how MySpace worked in this part. Because <clears throat> I don't want to gloss over that. That's interesting. But you're from Montreal for the sake of this conversation. And you already are doing a beat battle in New York. Crushing shit at a young age. And people want to talk about how Montreal has not put in work to be places on the map. I just want to throw it out there. Nah, that's part of why we're doing it. I'm not trying to throw shade at anyone. But I think one of the more interesting parts of this channel has seen all of these efforts Montreal has done to be out there and it's really cool that you shared that because that is amazing and man, and man and man and coming from a humble perspective i wouldn't even put myself amongst like you know the, 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 that top tier of when i say the guys who put in for the city or, or like mm. at, a, at the og level and things like that like yo shout out to, like 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 there's a lot of people that i even inspired from from my i would say my wave of my generation of people until now like like damn bro like no Montreal been putting a lot like I got my own qualms for, for whatever you want to call the scene of this or that whatever you know but to say that like you know peeps haven't been doing shit or there's nothing stuff oh god no come on man like we, we've been bubbling like 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 I'll give you stories so he, for fucking days about people so you know? I have to admit like straight up once upon a time I was part of the problem um just on this subject because I like the idea of giving flowers today but like I started in 2012 and I watched everything kind of fall apart because let's say 2012 to 2014 is when certain things happened that had a lot of things change um, in the scene. 
Um, and so the live show situation kind of got fucked up a bit. And part of it yeah. was drink prices went up. I don't think people actually know how much that fucked shit up. But when Belmont yeah. dropped those $20 pictures, a lot of shit changed. Nobody wanted yeah. to go to Belmont no more. It is what it is. And it's not disrespect to them. But, yo, I can tell you, you get rid of the $20 picture selling point, it becomes a lot fucking harder to tell a guy to come to this event. $20 yeah. rum and Cokes was fucking huge. Anyway. Um, it's a big way to tell somebody to tag along. You know what I mean? But, um... So I came in then, but I was arrogant as shit, and I was 25, so I already felt like I was old and I was super cocky, and so I'm the kind of fucker that used to go around and talk about how everything's a problem and everything, they said, I'm going to be the savior of Montreal type bullshit, whatever. That was a stupid attitude. I acknowledge that today, but I'm actually dumbfounded by how much I'm discovering Montreal's history really is, which is why I'm grateful a guy like you is even here talking to us because, you know, after this, it just kind of adds to the bigger picture of Montreal's history. So I don't know who in Montreal, let's say when you got into it, who in Montreal was interesting to you at the time? Who can we give flowers to at that point in your career? Um, at, at the time, like the people that were really killing it was rest in peace, bad news, Brown, like people like these are people. Cause like, it's not necessarily somebody who whose music I would bump to the most, but like I knew at an early time in my craft that it's music business. It's two parts to it. And I started looking at the Oof. people that were applying that second word. You know what I mean? And you know, these, there was people like that that were doing it. There was, fuck, I mean, really really pushing it but like like he was the only one at the time that was doing it, the anglo side he, he was out there hooking up producers and like people that were really working hard and like doing awesome stuff too it's people like dirt work you know what i mean like i saw what they were doing i was like yo that's fucking inspiring like yeah thanks for the bits uh you know speeds I mean? and stuff like that really pushed and there's millie mills these guys were fucking murdering shit. Magnum 357. Uh, these guys, these guys from 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 my standpoint, like as a, as a, as a producer or as a, as a musical person, these guys were not only artists that I saw were hot or fine tuning their craft as they went along with the time, but they were also themselves or have somebody with them in their team that is applying the business side of things. And that's, that's a really piqued my interest over everything else. You know what I mean? Because the city is overly saturated with talent and that's not a bad thing, but when it comes to who's applying on a consistent basis, the business ethics to their craft, it's, it's hard, man. It's a discipline and it's, and I don't take it on nobody. We, we don't, it, it, it's not, nah, it's, it's cool, man. Thing, yeah. <laughs> I hear what you're saying, but I only really asked that question because, again, I'm trying to document history. And we're going to rewind mm. back to where you're at with your story after your competition. But I want to just shine light on the knowledge nugget you just shared, and it's the business side. And that, again, resonates heavy with me on this ego tip, right? Um, it took me a long time to recognize that maybe some of my musical choices were not things people really wanted to listen to. Like I wrote a song about corporate jargon and while it might be an impressive feat to some people, it, I remember my dude looking at me and going, dude, this sounds like a fucking meeting. I don't want to hear this. And that really resonated with me, right? Like I wrote a song that triggered him in that way. And so you start thinking a little bit differently about impact and stuff. So the business side is about fan acquisition. It's about stats. It's about accessibility. It's about, you know, actually compromising a little bit so i think it's interesting that you focused on that because personally i'm trying to figure out who takes the business side in this city currently that's half the reason i'm doing these interviews like who the fuck is taking their business seriously you know taking notes on everybody right now and i'm going to talk to everybody in the fucking city that's what it is anybody that wants to come here but yo um i love what you said there because i think that sometimes people don't take their business very seriously and uh they have a lot of talent and that was me once upon a time. So it really resonates with me. I started taking my business seriously. I started really working hard and blah, 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 and all the good shit. And, you know, life changed for me. It is what it is. Um, so I love that you're sharing this because to me, it's big facts. And uh, let's go back to after that contest. So what ends up happening there? The judges are bopping. I think I cut you off. My bad about that. No worries, man. I can always tie back right back to it. Um, the judges... Uh... 
You know, I see them bopping. Everybody's good. The, the DJ, the DJ spins the turntable back, and I'm ready for my feedback. Um, and then they hit me with it. They tell me my drums are knocking. That already like relieved me right away. Like your first word is a positive word. Like we're, we're already heading in the right fucking direction. You know what I mean? And then uh, next dude. Which happens to be J. Rue the Damager, by the way. No shit. Yeah. Oh, boy. Said, said everything is hot and that I'm mad original. And then all I need right now is an engineer to mix my shit. Like, to make it sound less muddy and, like, like make, make make the melody and the sample cut too and all that. And then Lenny S. hit me with this. He's like, if I were to give this to Jadakiss, I would need a hook on these things. And he left me at that. Okay. That's the that's the day I became a producer, bro. That's an insane thing. That's an insane fucking thing. Mm-hmm. Holy shit! Mm-hmm.